happy to. Big Lou, Big Lou's Coach Review, back here with another review, and today we're here to do a little review on the Trishel V2. Now, the Trishel V1 I had, and I gave it away some time ago. It was a good performing mechanical tube mod. I never reviewed it, but it was one of those type of mechanical tube mods you just end up buying, and you just never end up doing a review on it, because... It didn't really speak to me. It, it was cool looking, but it didn't really speak to me, like as far as performance goes. It was it was good. It was a mech. You know, it was a very good mech. It was, you know, definitely room for improvement. Other, you know, I've seen reviewers give it, you know, ranting, raving reviews. And when I got it, I was like, eh, all right, you know, it's, it's okay. You know, it's all right. But for a first production item of a mechanical tube mod for a company that predominantly does RDAs and tanks and so forth, um, it was actually decent. It was actually pretty decent. Now, mine, I'm rocking it on an Apocalypse 25mm RDA. I got mine all murdered out in black. Um, pretty interesting. I got the black one, and they also had sent me a brass one, which I never opened. Okay, so I picked this up, and I, you know, I really, I really saw the reviews out there. I was interested in the Switch because they don't have reverse polarity on the magnets. The magnets do not repel each other. The magnets attract each other. And I wanted to see what that was all about. I wanted to take apart the switch myself because I've seen a lot of reviewers take apart the switch or talk about the switch, but not really get into in-depth detail about how that switch really works, which you know tells me they don't know themselves or they were just too lazy to film it. Um, some, you know, I have, honestly, I really haven't seen anybody get into in-depth detail about it, which I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you what the washers are about, what the magnets are about, what the coil is about, everything in this mechanical tube mod. Now, um, today I went ahead and built some coils today. I have, I have like my own coiling jig platform I picked up from, uh, from Home Depot. <laughs> So basically, I bought wood from Home Depot, and I made my own type of coiling jig. And in this video, I'm going to show you the coiling jig and show you me building coils on the jig itself. Um, parts that were purchased uh, on this uh, for this video, parts that I used for the jig for this video, well, just in general, not even for this video, but just in life in general when I make coils, I use uh, USA ohm meters. Um, they're I forgot what you call it, but it's it's black and it's got this, this slide thing and it's whatever. I'll 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 show you what it is basically. And then uh, I got this other thing from 3D Vape, which goes in the chuck of a drill and it locks down the wires. You know, because that's that was always my biggest pet peeve in building coils at home is getting the wires to go into the drill chuck. And get the wires to stay side by side, you know, so they don't twist. And, you know, getting them to lock down perfect or tighter. Because I use, for a wrapping wire, I use 36 gauge Nichrome 80 twisted messes, okay? Which it's not 38, it's not 39, and it's not 40, which are very thin gauges. But 36 gauge is actually on the borderline of thin and thick. But... I actually really, really like using 36 gauge to wrap my wires with, or wrap my coils, basically. And to me, it's very responsive. I like how responsive the 36 gauge is. And because, you know, as you go thinner, it's a much higher resistance. So if I have 24 gauge wire and I'm wrapping it in 40 gauge wire, it's, you know, I'm building more resistance. So I didn't want to do that. So 36 gauge is a little bit lesser of uh, of the evils, of the two evils, basically. So I like 36 gauge to wrap my wires with. And you'll see in this video me using it. But um, I got them in four wrap around a three millimeter. And I got to say, they hit really hard, you know. They hit really, really hard, okay. And right now I'm needing some juice on my coils. I don't really have any juice on it because I've been vaping this device, but... You know, that's, that happens, you know, but, uh, <laughs> from time to time that happens. So, yeah, so 
I really dig the way this looks, this mechanical tube mod, especially with this setup with the Apocalypse 25 millimeter RDA. Um, you know, I get it with Apocalypse. A lot of people are like, oh, fuck that company, blah, blah. But you know what? I like their products, and I don't really care what anybody says. I don't care about whatever, whatever, about anything. I still love their RDAs. You know, when I thought these RDAs were made in America, I still love them. I still love them to this day, so I don't really care what anybody says, really, okay? Where they're made or whatnot for the RDA, because the RDA outperforms most RDAs that are out today, and that's just a fact, okay? So I, I can't escape the truth. That's the freaking truth, you know, and that's it. So, um, the mechanical tube mod, now everyone complains about the switch being weird on it. You know, it's like a little, it's firm and then it goes dink and it's almost like a MyTech clicky switch. But I gotta say, it's pretty responsive. The moment it makes contact with that battery, there's no 1-1000, 2-1000 fire. It's just, it's, it's on, you know, it's on. As soon as you hit that button, it's on. So I'm pretty impressed with the mechanical tube mod itself. Uh, are there cons, really? Yeah, there's, there's kind of subjective cons, really, you know? Um, you know, they have battery venting at the 510. Okay, they need to be, they're trying to be safe. They have um, a Delrin insulator on the inside of the tube for anybody who has rips in their battery wrappers. So protection, I understand that. They're keeping safety in mind. A lot of mechanical tube mods keep safety in mind. but. One thing you need to keep in mind, really, is that when there's an authentic mechanical tube bot selling for three, four hundred dollars, right? And people in public and or in general are like, look, you know what, I really like this mechanical tube mod, but there's no venting on it, and blah blah blah. Well, it's because the person who is using that three, four hundred dollar mechanical tube mod is experienced. You're not gonna find an inexperienced vapor buying a three four hundred dollar mechanical tube mod with no safety on it and then have a battery explode in their pocket you're not going to find that you're going to find the guys that are using 70 80 90 even 125 dollar mechanical tube mods who don't really know much about mechs who see videos online try to replicate what we do and sometimes they buy they, they opt out for a cheaper battery and then batteries explode you know they're doing very low bills on five amp high drain they're only five amp drain batteries which i've seen some idiot kid once in a vape shop who had a five amp drain samsung battery that he took out of his laptop and he was using it in his mech i'm like are you mentally retarded you know are you just out of your mind you know so i don't know anyway so there are people doing the wrong things out there but today i'm going to give you my honest opinion on this mechanical tube mod uh, maybe I'll do an unboxing on the brass so you can see what's inside when you get it from the factory and how it looks and so forth and so forth as far as quality control goes. Uh, this mechanical tube mod, I've been using the black one. I really like it. I like the feel. It reminds me of the hard hitter from uh, Heavy Metal Vapor. So it reminds me of the hard hitter from Heavy Metal Vapor only because uh, the feel. It has that same type of coating on the outside. It feels exactly the same. Now, ergonomically, it's great. I mean, it's, uh, I believe they said this is 27 millimeters down here and 26 millimeter with a taper down to 25 millimeter at the top 510, which is, you know, pretty standard for the industry. And right now, a lot of RDAs are 25 millimeter RDAs. So, you know, there were 24s, which I love 24s still, but 25 is just that, you know, half millimeter in circumference all around, which kind of helps, you know. So, um, not bad, you know, actually pretty good. Switch, I know everyone is bugged out with this, about the switch, but I like the switch, okay. I like the feel, I like that it's always flat and it's always there on there tightly. It's always there tightly, you know. It's, it's on there strong until you push it in. And then it fires and it's just a nice hit and it's a nice switch i like the switch you guys know i like innovation and in switches you like when i see new and different and interesting things going on at switches well i get well guess what i really really dig this switch now the type of coil build that i have in this video is 24 gauge stainless steel wrapped in 36 gauge nichrome 80. um 
Understand I'm only doing four wraps around a three millimeter driver. So a three millimeter in, inner diameter, that's a big blue build, basically three millimeter, 24 gauge, two wire, uh, dual coil build in an RDA. That's my preferable build. And it's usually around four wraps. You can do five wraps to get more cotton coverage, but it's not gonna be that hot of a vape. But my problem is with my coils, they don't last very long, okay? Because I don't know why. <laughs> I really don't know why. Maybe it's because they're just too hot and the metal just falls apart after a while. But I don't usually keep coils in my RDAs for more than two days anyway. I usually change them out after two days. Um, other than that, as far as cotton goes, when you're using really hot, low builds, I say this to everyone, do not buy cheap cotton because cheap cotton will fall apart. And you'll find, you say, you'll find yourself changing your cotton sometimes twice a day if you're doing really low building, uh, low ohm build coils, right? So I'm using a Team Vape Lab. I'm using this cotton here. And this is very thick, very strong, very durable cotton. It's got a great flavor retention. And it's probably one of the best cottons I've ever gotten. Uh, this was actually given to me by my buddy Eric, uh, Eric Simpson over in uh, Vape Mechanics. He actually gave me this. It's cotton that comes from Japan, and uh, it's organic, 100% organic. It says chemical-free, originated from Japan, uh, improved wicking formula, authentic taste, superb flavor retention, and maximum durability. I will give them that. It does have maximum durability because... Cotton sometimes in these coils outlast my coils. <laughs> that says a lot about cotton. I gotta say it's a very, very nice hit. Really nice mechanical tube bot. Now, the comparison for American authentic mechanical tube bots for the diehard American authentic mech guys out there, uh, there's a lot of Unfortunately, American companies that are closing. Now you have Comp Life, which is still around, and they sell a lot of mechanical tube bonds, and they're very high priced mechanical tube bonds. You have Purge, which is also an American company. They're selling mechanical tube bonds. You know, um, you have Kennedy, Kennedy selling mechanical tube bonds. And there's a few other handful other mechanical tube bond companies out there that we love and use. And then you get other companies like Death Wish Mods out of Canada. And then you get a uh, uh, Vapor's Cloud, but Vapor's Cloud and Deathwish both have their mods made out of China, so you know they're China mods. But this one being a China mod itself, I gotta say the quality is really nice. It feels like the hard hitter, and it reminds me of the Bonza uh, mech that um, that Sam came out with. Okay. So it, it, they all kind of like, you know, it's in that category of high quality Chinese mechanical tube bonds. But they all kind of feel the same. I don't know how to explain that, guys. They all feel the same to me. But does it perform? Yes, it does perform because if it didn't perform, you would not be seeing a video on my channel for it. Okay, so definitely worth the money on this one. A couple little quirks of my own on here that I question, you know. Little things I question, but we'll get into that in the up close portion. Other than that, let's go up close. Let's check out this mechanical tube mod, the switch, and uh, we'll check out my coil building video. In this video, it's going to be super quick and fast, so pretty interesting to look at, though. So it may inspire you to do something at home, a little DIY coil, coil jig building type of device type of thing. Okay, and that's it. That's all I got to say. So let's go up close. Let's do this.
So what we got here is we have our Trishel box right here. Uh, it is the V2 Mech Mod by Hell Vape. Okay. On the side, they got an image of the Mechanical Tube Mod. It says 1905. Not sure what that means. Uh, over here, it's a little scan code and a little scratch and sniff thing. You could ask Jay-Z what flavor this is. And then on here, it says evoke your vaping genius evoke the vaping genius now in the back they got all the features and the contents of the mechanical tube mod that's in the box and the kit contents itself they're saying here that this has a trishel v2 mechanical tube mod 18650 battery adapter uh, a black magnet silicone gasket o-ring and metal gasket and user manual and warning card Okay, now they're saying it's 27 millimeter in diameter, tapers down to 25 millimeter. Innovative magnet attraction button design with comfortable using in long term. Strong and stable uh, magnetism by powerful black N95 uh, N52. Uh, I don't know what the hell that says. Magnet. So it's an N52 magnet. Um, Automatic floating battery adjustment by silicone ring, except single 21700, 2700, and 18650 battery with the adapter. And it says the adapter is included. Switch built with uh, switch with built-in canted coil spring for better conductivity. Large copper contact with mirror polishing craft for better conductivity so i'm gonna go ahead and open this bad boy up it's one of those side slide cases now if you have difficulty getting your boxes open you could always stick a screwdriver in there just push and open it a little easier okay when you open it the contents you'll find is the user manual staring you right in the face, a warning card. Uh, it's a battery safety warning card, so that helps. And they're telling you don't build below 0 0.20 ohms. They're trying to, um, they're just trying to market to the person who's just buying a mechanical tube mod and doesn't really know anything. It's telling you do not use an atomizer with no protruding pin. You need a protruding pin in order to use this RDA. And that's about it, really. Okay. And do not use battery wrappers that are torn. Use solid battery wrappers. Brand new batteries, if possible. If you have a battery that's about four years old, just throw it in the trash and buy a new one. That four-year-old battery is probably not performing as well as you might think it is. Um, interesting to have a mechanical tube mod with an owner's manual. Most uh, authentic American tube mod companies do not include an owner's manual with their mechanical tube mods, so they're keeping it on that corporate level, basically. Um, pretty cool. They give you the whole switch breakdown from the bottom button to the canted coil to the magnet to the housing to another magnet, the washers, and uh, the battery height adjuster and the contact. You know, So there's there's a lot going on over there, and then... You know, you see everything here. Everything's all out in the open for you. Okay. So, um, other than that, let's check out this mechanical tube mod. Now, remember, first time I'm opening this brass one. Okay. Get rid of that. Slide that over. Take this out. And it's shiny. Shiny, shiny brass. Very nice. Like I said, it's got that MyTech clicky sound to it. Now, if you open this up, see if there's anything inside the tube. Yes. Okay. My inner sleeve just came out. My inner sleeve. Whoop. Okay. So here we go. We have our 18650 uh, extension for the 18650 battery. Nice, big, solid copper contact on the outside. Solid contact on the inside. It goes all the way through. And let's see, inside, they give you a black N52 magnet, uh, another 
washer or spacer in this situation. They also give you a little tool, a little plastic tool and a battery height, a automatic battery height adjuster as well. Uh, it's just basically like a rubber grommet basically. Uh, they also gave me an additional contact by the looks of it of what fell out. So let me pick that up real quick. Is it an additional? Nope, it's the actual copper contact. Okay. Hmm. There's our battery height adjuster. And we're going to need the plastic tool to remove this contact. So I'm going to go in my baggie. Move the plastic tool. There you go. It says Hell Vape on it. It's plastic. And take this, place it in there, and turn counterclockwise. Let's see. Okay. And take our tool, stick it in the contact, turn counterclockwise. We're going to be removing our switch apart. Oop. Okay. Seems like it loosened up. A couple more quick little turns. And our contact came out. Now this is the inside contact. There's two. You have the top contact, which is a constant contact. And then you have your bottom contact. They say it's a mirror polish. And it is actually pretty shiny. I got to say, it is a pretty shiny copper contact. And now, to remove the bottom button, I'm just going to take a flathead screwdriver and push through the threads we got that out okay so there's our button you can see there's three holes for venting right there nice shiny brass nice machining very good machining i gotta say the quality on the machining is pretty superb and let's see we're gonna remove this magnet and washer as well so that's one black magnet n95 i guess they called it or no, N52, N95, like the filters. I'm going to just stick this on the side with the washer. I don't want these these magnets to attract, smash into each other and break, so that would suck. So let's see. Hmm. There's no washer on one side, only one washer, basically. Okay, let me see that now. So it only came with one washer, and that was on the top portion right here. Okay. There's also an O-ring at the very bottom on the inside of this. There's an O-ring. Right in here. I'm not going to remove that O-ring because it's pointless. What's the point of ruining that O-ring for no reason at all? Uh, the inside, you can see that it's actually not completely uh, circular. It's got a different shape to it. So you got a flat side here, flat side here, with an oval side on two sides, basically. And, of course, battery venting here. If I flip it, you can see our canted coil spring right there. That is our canted coil spring. And it goes all the way around in which the button is rubbing this. This brass button right here rubs that. So once this fits into position, the sides of this button is rubbing the canted coil spring. Okay, so the sides of this button rub the sides of that canted coil spring on the inside there. Okay, so that is, you know, ensuring contact with the negative portion of the mechanical tube mod. Then we have two little posts, one here and one here. These posts are to prevent and stop the button from going any further in. You can see by these notches that are cut out into the button, they go in there basically. They're like guides, okay? 
So the button won't spin left and right. They'll just fit into place basically, and that's it. So that's with the button all the way in. And it is touching that canter coil spring on the inside portion of the switch. Okay. So let's see. Now I got to put this baby up back together again. So the way this was, we had. Up top, this is the top portion. This is the top portion that's going inside the mechanical tube mod. So I'm going to drop this little washer right here. Okay, and that fits. And its own little cutout in there in the switch. It fits perfectly, so it keeps it perfectly centered in there in the switch. I'm going to take a magnet. Drop a magnet in there. Okay. Now, it doesn't matter which polarity the magnet's going right now, because honestly... There's no magnet on the other side, so it doesn't really matter at this point. But with the washer in there, you can see how the washer is, basically. See how the washer is through the brass right here? So it, it's creating a ledge. It's creating a ledge. So this is funny. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to drop a magnet in here, and it's going to attract this magnet to this magnet, forcing that washer to stay in place, okay? Forcing the washer to stay in place. Now, all that washer is designed to do is to create a ledge for this button. The center shaft of this button is gonna go through the magnet that's here, that's attracting this magnet to the magnet that's gonna go in here. But this shaft of the button is going to push this washer up equally and it's going to push one magnet away from the other so when your button goes in it's pushing it in and it's pushing up and then once it pushes up and pushing that magnet away from the other magnet so if i push this in it's going to go in and it's pushing this magnet that's attracting a magnet that'll be in here away from each other and then when I let go of the button, this magnet's going to re-attract to the magnet that's in here, forcing the button outward. So that was actually a pretty good idea. You know, we, you know, in the, in the vape industry, we utilize magnets to repel each other. So th in this case, they're attracting, and it's it's really interesting that that's happening. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and drop this in here again, just center up my washer to go fit in its place. Got the little cutout it sits in in there. Okay, I'm gonna drop this magnet in here. So now that's in there. Okay, now I'm going to take this magnet and just drop it in there. It's going to attract. Okay, it's going to attract. So now there's nothing else that goes in here because the canted coil spring is already in the housing of the switch housing. I just gotta line up that metal bar with that metal bar with the notch system on the button. Do that right now. Those are my guides. Okay, that's not it. So let me line this up correctly. Notch there, notch there. Okay, let's see. No, not lined up. Maybe that? Yeah, that did it. Okay. So now the button is going to push that. It's going to go through the switch housing. So the actual button here that's rubbing against the canted coil spring is going to push up against the washer. Push the magnet. It's pushing the magnet away from the other magnet. So the button is going through the bottom magnet where there's no washer on the bottom magnet. It's only in the top area that's going on the inside of the mechanical tube mod and this button the shaft of it's going to push on the washer which will then push the magnet away from the other magnet but there is a good amount of force because they're attracting each other so that's why the magnet is going to slap itself to the other magnet and it's going to force the button out because the washer is under this magnet and it's going to push the shaft of the button outward. So it's always going to do it. It's always going to do it.
The only other thing I have to do now is just screw in my copper contact. There's the mirror finished copper contact. And this is cool because I don't really have to put any force on the button because the button is locked into position with those two shafts on the inner portion right there. So I don't even have to hold that. And plus the magnets are retracting, so they're holding the button in right now. So that's pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and spin this on, use my little hefty, uh, my little nifty plastic tool. Con number one, through everyday usage, this contact will back out on its own and could auto fire your mod. It has happened to me a couple times, so please make sure this contact is always screwed in tight to prevent it from loosening after a couple days of usage. Just check the contact to ensure that it's in there tight so it won't auto fire vape safely. A way to avoid this is simply just applying a little Loctite 243 to the threads and it won't back out. Now one thing I do wish Hellvape could have done was just made this a metal tool. There was no need to fabricate it in plastic. They put a little eyelet on it right here so you can actually put it on a key ring and use it in the future. But I only wished this was made of metal rather than Delrin. I know it's cheaper to go the Delrin route, and probably easier to mass produce, but having this in metal would have been better because plastic for me on a keychain is not going to live or outlive what I do on a daily basis, okay? Uh, even my keys go through a lot of abuse. Now the little rubber grommet on here, it's pretty interesting what happens here is because this just fits over the top okay and this is designed to scrunch okay it's designed to scrunch down so that's what i like now now originally u.s vapor mods created this battery height adjuster and it changed the entire industry forever. They were the originators of this self-adjusting battery height adjuster. They had something similar. They did it with foam and a washer on both sides of the foam. And it would compress the foam down. And that was used as a battery height adjuster. You guys always see me wear a t-shirt, USA Mods. Uh, it's one of my most favorite mod companies that ever came out, basically, that released the Mechanical Tube Mod. And it was... a uh, father and son company that had opened and did that mechanical tube mod. Now there is a little lip on this constant contact right here. So I'm going to fit this into here first before I put it on the mechanical tube mod. I'm going to make sure it goes under the lip. This way I have a solid, you know, contact there and now it's on there good okay i'm gonna go ahead and just get that to sit on there now the interesting about this is there's magnets in here okay so the magnets are attracting each other but guess what when i put a battery in my mechanical tube mod the battery will be attracted to this contact right here because of the magnet on the inside which is always going to be in constant contact with the copper okay so I think that's pretty cool, all right? So that's another cool little feature. So for instance, I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew my other mech. I got my Samsung 30T in here. It's, the same, oop, it's my Samsung 30T battery, okay? No, no tears, no rips or anything like that. I'm gonna go ahead and drop that in there. Now, once this makes connection, you can see this is stuck to it. The magnet attracts the battery. I think that's cool because it makes it in constant contact with that. Now, one little thing I got to do is I got to put my little plastic sleeve back in my mechanical tube mod. And down at the bottom of the mechanical tube mod, it's a little hard to see because it is kind of dark in here. But there is another uh, insulator at the top 510 deep on the inside of this mechanical tube mod. All right, but we're going to go ahead and just drop this sleeve in there, drop my battery in there, whether it's positive up or negative down, doesn't matter in this one. Threads, I'm going to say threads are actually really clean, really smooth, really deep, large threads. They're big threads and they're pretty big. 
you know, pretty big. I got to say that. So it's, that's, that's a definite. They're pretty big. Now, got a little rattle. Just by itself, a little rattle. But that's only because there's no RDA up top. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and take my 25 millimeter Armageddon. I'm going to go ahead and thread it into the top. So as I'm threading this in, the 510 portion of the, of the RDA is now hitting the battery and compressing the battery down. Will this fire? Yes, because the 510 pin is long enough to hit the battery. But now, compressing that little rubber grommet, we have our mechanical tube mod. 27 millimeter here, and it tapers down to like a 24 millimeter here and then works its way back up to 26 millimeter at the top and it tapers down a very slight beveled edge up top down to make it to 25 okay interesting design it almost looks like a scope to a rifle it's got these little uh cut it, it like cutouts right there they have one here one here and one here three little cutouts right there their logo right there and these heat retention fins okay now is this a necessity it's not really a necessity but people in general used to do this on rdas probably around two years ago it's like a thing every rda had these heat shield fins on them and it was supposed to retain i think the barrage rda from thesis has this on it as well but a lot of uh flavor chasing rdas they would get pretty hot because the very restricted draws on them so they would have these fins on it to retain the heat or to radiate the heat out so it's not going to heat up the whole entire mechanical tube mod. Now, I build very, very low. And most mechanical tube mods I vape on have a tendency to get warm. But I'm going to tell you this. So far, my black one never gets warm on me. Now, is it because they put these heat shields on here? I don't know. But if I don't know how it's going to perform without these heat shields. So maybe these heat shields are actually working. A lot of people say it's useless to put these on mechanical tube mods. But I don't know. I got to say, you know, my black one never gets hot on me. Now, is it a fact that my mechanical tube mod does not get hot because of these shields? I have no idea because I've never used this mechanical tube mod without shields you know what i'm saying so maybe because it doesn't get hot is it's actually doing its job <laughs> you know rdas get really really hot you know and if they get hot it's going to make your battery hot if your battery gets hot then your mechanical tube mod will end up getting hot as well and since i build very low my rdas always get hot because the 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 heat is just insane so these mechanical tube mods, as far as the black coated copper, because this one's copper and it's black, um, does not get hot on me at all. You know, the black one just does not get hot on me at all. And then firing it, really responsive. Very responsive. I'm using a little strawberry custard. This is Mars from Out of This World Vapor. It's a very thick juice. That's what I like about this e-liquid. Very thick, very dense, but very good flavor. It's not very sugary, which I like, and it performs really nice. Very good liquid. Great tasting e-liquid. Now... My cons on a mechanical tube mod always goes as follows. I hate the recycling bin and I hate CE. I know it's a corporate company and they have to put these insignias on the box, but I don't want to see it on a mechanical tube mod. This takes away from the beauty of the product. China, you do not need to put this crap on the mechanical tube mods. Not here in the States. You don't have to put that on there. We don't need to see this crap on here. Stop putting CE and trash bins on the product you're making. Otherwise, you know, the product itself, is it a great product? Yes. 
Is the coating durable? Yes. Do I like the design? Yes. Does it perform? Yes. The threads, are they big? Yes. Do the magnets work well? Yes. Do I have any arc marks on the contact? I got a little patina in going on the contact, but no arc marks. There is a slight yellowing from the constant contact. Sometimes that's just pure oxidation from copper touching tin on these battery wraps or the actual batteries themselves that, that they're what they're made of, basically. So there is going to be some electrolysis happening there. So there's going to be some, you know, discoloration of the contact. But arcing, there is zero arcing on the contact, much less my batteries. So, you know, I can't really abuse this company because what they did was they came out with a product that's constant contact and hits very hard, works really well, and it's at an affordable price. So definitely worth the money of picking up. Check out Hell Vapes YouTube channel. They're always doing giveaways on their YouTube channel. And check out their website and check out vendors that sell their product. If you want to buy this for a cost-effective, affordable mechanical tube mod, very good purchase. I'm really, really digging it. Really like it. I'm actually liking the brass. I didn't think I was going to like the brass so much, but it reminds me of an old AV mod. So I like the shape of this brass. Plus it hits. It hits really nice. I mean, listen to that. Woo! That's a strong hit. Not bad. I got to say, I'm really impressed with this mechanical tube mod. They did an awesome job, Hellvape. So I applaud you, Hellvape, on a wonderful product. I like the VC Tech switch that's in there, the canted coil that they got in there, like Vapor's Cloud or the Dreamer mod uses. So I really, really dig that. Really appreciate that. So thank you very much for using the canted coil spring. It will increase the performance of any mechanical tube mod on the market. That's just hands down 100% for sure. Okay. So there you have it, folks. Went up close. Did everything we had to do. Showed you everything. Showed you the cons. Showed you the pros. Showed you everything about it. We checked out the brass one. And now we have our black one. My daily usage. It's in my daily rotation, just so you know. So I've been using it daily. I love this RDA, the uh, Apocalypse 25. It looks awesome on it. It actually looks really good. I have no complaints on how this device looks or performs. Great overall mechanical tube mod. The finish is actually very durable. Very durable, the finish. I'm actually really surprised that this mod came out of China because the durability of the finish is just amazing. So uh, I'm really digging it. The brass one I might send over to Palmer's Powders and have him do something intricate and cool to uh, something very unlike Big Lou's colors that I would use on an RDA or a mechanical tube mod. So I'm thinking about sending this over to uh, Palmer's Powders. You know, he's a good man at Palmer's Powders. If you don't know Palmer's Powders, look him up on Instagram. He's got a lot of mechanical tube mods and RDAs that look amazing. Does powder coating that's just unexplainable how amazing they look but he does it and i uh, give him all the props in the world so shout out to him and that's it that's all i'm going to say so like comment and subscribe thank you for watching this video thank you for the subscribers out there and all the people that watch and support my videos i've noticed that i've been getting a total of 1500 views out of 50,000 subscribers that i have so um something's going to happen somewhere i'm guessing people don't know i exist anymore or people don't know that I'm still doing reviews or whatnot. So if you know anybody out there that's questioning, ah, oh, you know who's a good guy, Big Lou, you know, I haven't seen him in a while, let him know that I'm still putting videos out there and that's it, all right? And uh, that's all I gotta say. So for me to YouTube, peace out, like, comment, and subscribe. I'm out of here. Laters.